the Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth hype train just doesn't seem to have any breaks. The set is going off. There is an alleged over $2 million bounty on the One Ring. But most importantly, this set is proving that it is far more than just a chase for a one of one. And that is fantastic news for you and me. Let's talk about it. We currently exist in a Magic the Gathering timeline that I wasn't sure I would ever see again. With Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle-Earth set to drop later this month as of the recording of this video, it's weird to find the majority of the Magic the Gathering community all behind a single release. Most of the community feels a sense of overwhelming positivity. People are excited to get the cards in their hands and play them in various formats. And though the collector box, yes, is expensive, it demands a higher price, there is insane chase and things that we covet in that box, which is how a collector box should work, and the draft and set box equipped with insane and ridiculous looking box toppers seem to be a wonderful answer at a much better price. So I wanted to take a second today to take a step back from always talking about, hey, this is something that I think we could fix, and kind of talk about all the good that is happening with the set, and why it is far more than just a chance case for a golden ticket. It has something for regular enthusiasts like you and I. So let's break down this set and I want to talk starting you know with the idea of chase in this collector box and it's so secret we mentioned the one of one ring that is a crazy chase. I think there's a bounty of allegedly over two million right now but other cards are starting to come to light out of these collector boxes and some big hits are obviously the serialized soul rings. Now I made a claim on this channel that once the one of one ring was pulled, these boxes would still hold value because of these rings. And lo and behold, the number one out of 700, I believe, ring it was, sold for $13,000. Dollars. That is right, 13000 for the one of 700 rings sold, saying to me, hey, Josh, hometown TCG, you might have been on something. If you think, if you were here all along and you think I might have been on to something about these collector boxes holding value because of the other stuff in there, let me know in the comment section below. But we always assumed that this was going to be extremely exciting. In fact, I want to give a shout out to the channel Rip and Ship by Moonshot, uh, one of the best vocalized box opening channels I've ever laid eyes on. It's so much fun. Had an opportunity to pull one of these serialized soul rings. If you haven't, go check their channel out, find that video. It's really cool. And the excitement and the energy you feel when this card comes out of the pack is just palpable. You absolutely love to see it. And this to me says there's more. These boxes go deeper than just cracking packs, throwing everything in the garbage and looking for that one of one ring. And I know serialized soul rings are also extremely coveted, but they do go deeper than that. My homie Louie over at Kitchen Table TCG, I believe, pulled a regular soul ring. That is right, just one of the regular soul rings, one of, you know, 3,000, 7,000, or 9,000, the non-foil version, but they exist in a space that Wizards of the Coast hadn't previously really given us. Every card had an assumed print number, but WotC declared there are only this many of this card, and by doing so, made them more popular game pieces. Heck, I believe one is up for auction right now with the current current bid at $700 for a non-serialized version of a soul ring just because essentially it's a popular card magic and we know the number. You couple that with a lot of the cards looking in the set, not only like they fit thematically into the idea of playing Magic's most popular format, Commander, and doing so thematically, right? Building this Lord of the Rings themed deck with all of these card synergies and being able to sit down at your Commander table and sling spells from the universe of the Lord of the Rings, but there's also powerful cards that will help that format in other ways. Heck, there's that bat card out there that everyone is going, well, bat shit crazy for. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm a dad now. I had to do it. There's also several cards in Modern that tournament spikes and grinders and just brewers alike are looking to get their hands on, and they're excited to see how they're going to impact the format and play with these things. All of these are extremely positive. And to expand on that, we're actually seeing magic collectability move outside of not just play sets or one of for your commander, or, you know, play sets for modern or the uh, special art soul ring serialized versions and what have you, but move into the Lord of the Rings themes. That's right. In my comment section at youtube.com slash hometown TCG, right where you are right now, several users and several viewers have said, 
they're looking to collect these pieces from the Lord of the Rings. And most of these people watching my channel, in fairness, are magic enthusiasts. Most people who are subscribed to the channel are magic enthusiasts. Hey, if you're a magic enthusiast and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button. We do this every day of the week and we have a blast doing so. But these players are looking to pick up collections just because they also like Lord of the Rings. And that's something that we've seen fall short in several sets in the past. Hey, looking no further than things like Streets of New Capenna and Dominaria, Rema or Dominaria United. I thought these were wonderful sets that had a ton of playable cards. But because people didn't connect with the idea of wanting to show these things off in their binder, there was little to no collectability. And because of that, you know, let's say the sets didn't perform all that great. Well, Lord of the Rings Tales of Middle Earth looks to, to put a spin on that and is doing so extremely well. Now, mind you, this is definitely super early to be calling it the best magic set of all time. But in fairness, it's off to a rousing pre-start. We're in that weird spot where it's like it's not pre-release, but it's kind of pre-release because you're seeing a bunch of box openings and contents and the whole set's been spoiled. So we're in like that, we'll call it pre-release limbo. So I, I think it's really exciting. And I think it goes to show what can happen when regular magic enthusiasts, people like you and me, we're not, we're not stores, we're not millionaires, we're not like spending all of our hard-earned money on magic all the time. We have other things that we enjoy doing with our time. But when we all get behind the idea of a set and how things are going and, and the cards and the theme and the box opening experience, what it can do for Magic the Gathering and what it can do for our community. So Wizards of the Coast, I'm sure, has got to be taking note that when they can galvanize the troops as they, as they have seemed to have done with this set, the results are in Insane. Now they can do this, but you know, with the rapid release cycle and things like Magic 30th Anniversary Edition that left a bad taste in people's mouths, there might have been some hesitation, but I think this is going to lift a lot of that. So I think this set is doing extremely well. I think the long-term vision for this set for regular people like you and I is going to be draft boxes and set boxes are going to be available for a long time. I cannot imagine a scenario where draft and set sell out. I imagine a Modern Horizons 2 situation where Wizards of the Coast keeps reprinting this popular product. And listen, that's not a bad thing. Like, them reprinting more collector boxes would be bad. Them printing a million collector boxes would probably not be great because the product is supposed to be coveted. It's supposed to be collectible. The other products are meant to be used as as box opening vessels or game pieces or things to get around and sit, you know, draft and sling cards with your friends and bolster your commander decks and things like that. So I, I think that's going to be the case. And I really do believe that's a really positive space for Magic the Other. You know, coveted and limited collector boxes and very available regular products, I think is a great thing. But I don't wanna know, do you guys think this set has been an overwhelming positive experience? I really think it feels like this has been one of the happiest times in modern Magic history. But let me know if I'm missing something, if there's something that is overly, overtly negative that you think about, or if there's been another set that's been more positive than this one. Let me know in the comments section below. Guys, we are racing to 5750 subs. As of the recording of this video, we might, I, I don't remember where we are. We might be there, but we're on, after that, we're onward to 6K, and make sure you tune in this Friday for Friday Morning Magic. I will be updating the sales data, which is going bonkers this week. Every single sold listing of sealed product on TCG Player. We're going to be talking about that and be showing off some of the collection that the chat from two weeks ago uh, didn't pressure me into buying, but encouraged me to buy. And shout out Devin for actually donating and helping to that purchase. That was wild. So I'm going to be showing off some of what I am collecting. We're going to talk about all the magic news for the week. Thank you so much for hanging out. Make sure you share this video with a social media group, group of friends, whatever it is your favorite place to talk about magic. Share this video. Until next time, you all know me. My name is Josh, and I will see you around. Thanks for hanging out today. Goodbye.